requires you to buy and shoot them between June 27th and July 5th. If you're wondering if um, the fireworks that you've purchased are legal to shoot in the city, our recommendation has never changed. The good rule is shoot them where you buy them. And so if you've purchased your fireworks inside of the Wichita city limits, then they're legal to shoot inside Wichita city limits. That's not always the case if you've purchased them outside of the Wichita city limits. Our fireworks ordinance really hasn't changed in probably 15 or 20 years. It's the same ordinance. The only thing that changed last year is we started enforcing that. Imagine that, to have an ordinance and then enforce it. And so uh, we will tell you that uh, um, fireworks emitting flame balls or with sparks higher than six feet or more are not allowed in the city limits. Just like last year, the violations will carry a, a ticket of $250. And again, this year we'll have our fire department, our police out patrolling the violations responding to as many calls as they can possibly get to. If you have a complaint or see, see illegal fireworks, we would encourage you to report those at the special firework hotline 290-1011. Again, 290-1011 is a special hotline set up just to take the complaint calls for fireworks. For more information on any of that, you can visit wichita.gov slash fire or call the Wichita Fire Department at 268-4441. Now that's not the emergency line, that's just for more information. 268-4441. So we certainly want to ensure that everyone has a safe and happy 4th of July. Fireworks safety is certainly is critical and uh, we hope that you will educate your children, but we're lucky enough today to have Dr. Thomas Resch from the Via Christi Regional Burn Center, and I'm just going to invite Dr. Rush to come up and share with us. Dr. Great to have you. Hi. Thank you very much. Well, again, um, so I'm here from the Ascension Via Christi Regional uh, Burn Center, and we just want everybody to have a, a happy and safe fourth. And uh, from our end of things, we unfortunately uh, see a fair number of firework injuries from accidental or unsafe handling. Uh, most often, the injuries we see involve the hands, second most commonly, kind of the head, eyes, ears. We also unfortunately see a lot of uh, little kiddos with burns too, so we're hoping to prevent as many of those as possible this year, or best case, all of those types of injuries. Some of the tips that we give um, for adults Obviously, follow the package instructions. Um, if you're going to be uh, drinking beer or other things, either do that or do fireworks. Don't do both. Um, it, it also may be helpful to designate, like a designated driver, a sober person to, to light the fireworks for you. Um, in terms of young, small children, uh, they should really never directly handle fireworks. Um, I think it's probably been mentioned before, but even sparklers, which seem pretty benign, can get up to 1,200 to 1,800 degrees Fahrenheit, so that's like a, a blowtorch. Um, some of the alternatives for little ones that you can use, because you know they always want to get their hands on things, would be like a glow stick, one of the little party poppers, um, streamers, things like that. Uh, and then, um, I think to kind of reiterate, only use fireworks that are professionally manufactured, that are legally sold within your region. Uh, don't attempt to, to make your own, um, to modify existing fireworks. Um, when to set them off, try to find uh, gravel, concrete, a firm surface that's non-flammable to set them off on. Also in particular for things like mortars, we see a number of mortar related injuries. Um, a lot of times uh, they'll say on the device itself how to secure it, but it's helpful to either nail it into the ground or use a brick or something to hold that down because especially if it's windy or other things, those can blow over and we've seen injuries from innocent bystanders, even little children who've been struck just by being within the region. Um, on that same note, people should try to keep a safe distance away uh, from the fireworks where they're being set off. Ideally at least 
20 feet. Um, and then always keep a bucket of water and a water hose handy, um, which kind of segues into never hold uh, lit fireworks and don't ever put them uh, unlit in your pocket or anything like that. Safe storage of fireworks is a big deal. Uh, old fireworks, if you think they're illegal or something, either bring them into the fire department or throw them in water, let them soak till they unravel. Um, and then if you do have the unfortunate case of sustaining a burn, uh, what we recommend is um, run your hand under cool tap water. Don't use straight ice or anything that cold. Um, and then try to remove any jewelry or burning clothing. Uh, if you have a major burn, don't forget the old uh, adage, stop, drop, and roll. And um, if you have any questions or concerns at any time, uh, that's why we're here. We're always happy to help. So you can always uh, call us at our burn center. 268-5388 uh, is our, our burn center number, or just come through the uh, St. Francis ER, and, and we have our own special room. We can see patients right off the burn center. So any questions or concerns anytime, give us a call, and uh, happy to help. Thank you. Appreciate you. Great advice. We appreciate you being here, and Megan Lovely has to pay special attention because she can get a sunburn off of a sparkler. So I uh, certainly appreciate um, people taking extra care. We don't want to see injuries. If you would like to avoid the chance for injury altogether, our park department's going to hold their fifth annual red, white, and boom. It's a great way to celebrate the 4th of July and not have to spend your dollars on fireworks or the risk of being burned. And that will be held on July 4th this year from 5.30 to 10.30 out in front of the Hyatt Regency. They'll have food trucks on Water Street. They'll have the West Star Energy Food Court starting at 5.30. There'll be a beer garden uh, that will be open all evening on the Cakeland Lawn in front of the Hyatt Regency. The local band, Groove 42, will perform a free concert at Johnson Controls Stage starting at 7.30. And capping the great evening will be the red, white, and boom fireworks on the Arkansas River. That will start at 9.50, so a great way to celebrate without the risk of injury. If you would like to tune in, you, there will be music accompanying all of this show on KUIN 103.7 that will be heard all through the festival area. Great option. Uh, be safe. I want to give you an update on the budget simulator that uh, we, we used this year for the first time. We want to thank everyone who participated in the budget simulator. We had over 1,400 entries through that budget simulator that reached roughly 20,000 individuals through our social town hall media. We took those results and it inspired some additional conversations that reached nearly 20,000 people. Many of them weighing in on what they would like to see as their priorities for the budget and how they felt about the results of the budget simulator tools. So it was great feedback. While the budget simulator was never intended to be scientific, these are just extra tools that help the council as we make the decisions on our city budget. And it's just one of the ways that we're utilizing innovative tools to help us reach the general public and be as transparent and inclusive as we can possibly be. The manager will present all of these proposed spending plans to the City Council on July the 23rd. Additional public hearings will be held on August 6th, August 3rd, and then August 13th, the budget is scheduled to be adopted. If you didn't get a chance to weigh in, keep responding, giving your thoughts on social media, and staff will continue to make comments throughout the next week. Typically, we always hold um, budget activities at all of the district advisory board meetings and so you can get with your council person and I'm sure um, get the schedule of when those budget hearings are gonna be, budget meetings will be held at the various district advisory board meetings. This summer, the Wichita Public Library presents the Candid Conversations Book Club, a monthly book club that looks at issues of race and, and in our community and in our country. 
The next book club will be Friday, July 19th from 7 to 830 at the Maya Angelo Northeast Branch. The book will be discussed is The Real Education of T.J. Crowley by Grant Overstake. Set in Wichita in 1968, in the aftermath of Martin Luther King Jr.'s assassination, a 13-year-old boy learns the lesson of a lifetime. Doors will open at 645 for this event. Limited number of books are available to, for you to check out at the Angelo, Angelo branch. And then I want to share, for those that aren't on social media or haven't heard the news, this past weekend we were selected as one of the All-America Cities as we presented our case in front of a jury. We were one of 20 finalists, and they selected 10 cities to be named All-America. There were no size categories. All of the cities were thrown in together. I think the smallest city that won All-America City was a city of 3,501. They brought their new one, which was a very young child who had at least learned to speak and won, which was a very cute part of their presentation. But we're very honored to have this designation. It's been the first time in a decade that Wichita has been named an All-America City. And, and I think what really makes it, it even more exciting, it's, it's about what the community is doing. So we presented our case based on some new initiatives that are happening in our community. The jury obviously was very fond of the things that we're working. For instance, the First Step Barbecue the uh, program that 259 and City of Wichita is doing to feed the hungry, especially those that uh, don't have the resources. And so there's a number of places that we can feed those. League 42 was another great success story that was told. And, and we just had great feedback from the jury on the substance of the programs that we are doing here in Wichita, and it's gratifying to validate that as an All-America City. So again, it's uh, um, the National Civic League's competition. Um, this, I do want to share that this award was created in 1949. It was once called the Nobel Prize for Constructive Citizenship. And, and uh, again, it's given out every year to 10 communities. And it's been the first time in 10 years that Wichita has been named All-America City. So with that, we'll open it up to any questions. want to thank our guests that came and shared some great tips on how to have a safe 4th of July. Thank you both for being here. And if there's anything I missed, we have a fire chief. We have the, some folks from our... Police department? No, we don't have the police here, do we? Well, how does the city, or how can the city benefit from that, or how do they use that All American City status to? So it's a so the All American City status is just another opportunity for us to share with um, people all over the country what a great city we have. We spend nearly six million dollars through Visit Wichita to promote Wichita. And that doesn't count what the chamber spends to promote Wichita and Wichita businesses. So this is a great tool as we try and reach out. One of the issues that we know we have today is we have more jobs than people. So how do you recruit people to your city? With tools like we're an all-America city. You want a great place to live? You want a great place to find a job? A great place to grow a family? Come to an all-America city. And it's not just us bragging. It's validated through um, a whole series of judging and panelists and presentations. And so it's a fantastic tool to continue to help us grow our community and be more successful. Because when businesses are looking for cities to come to, they want cities like all America type cities so that families will feel comfortable. Well, we appreciate you being here. Thank you very much. And glad you all live in an all-America city. <laughs> Thank you. Appreciate the question.